Good morning, everybody. Welcome to my crazy life. It's Lori. It is Thursday at 7.09 a.m. I'm up, I'm dressed, my hair is done. Can we talk about the hair? Guys, I'm channeling 80s Lori. If I can find some pictures, I will share them at some point. Big crazy hair. That's how I feel. Yes, for those of you who actually have big hair, this isn't long, but for me, this is long. I mean, there's so much product in my hair that I could probably go up in flames. Just saying. So this morning, we're making some coffee. I've decided I'm going to make a little more cream. I'm gonna froth my cream. Got my little frother. This is from Bodum. I love their products, their directions are terrible. But it just gives your your creamer just a little extra something something. I love it, Frost. Aerates it. Think whipped cream, but not as thick. I go, although if I stood here and did this long enough, I could get whipped cream, but I'm not that patient. You all know that. So I just whip it up a little bit, clean off my frother, and put it away, and it takes batteries. We're making coffee. I just fed the boys, Alex, squawking like he's never been fed. That cat of mine is a chunk, but that's okay. Um, I'm gonna call my hairdresser. Well, I say call. I'm gonna message her today and see when she's got open. And if I have to take PTO and go during the day, I'm about that life. I will do it. It's not like I'm using it for anything else these days. Because I need a, a cut or I'm getting off the headband. Uh, so like I said, I've got a meeting in the office today with my bosses. So I got dressed. I'll be going in about 1030. And I started working in my closet last night. I'll show you the closet in my craft room, which was a disaster. Um, I'll show you how far I got. Of course, now the room is a disaster because I'm pulling everything out of this closet. But I chose to start last night because today is trash day. So all the stuff I purged will go right to my curb tonight. And then I can, so I think I've got the bulk of the trash or what I'm throwing away out. I've got bags to donate. Um, you know, some of it's just not worth donating to be honest with you. And that's okay. It's just stuff I've held on to because I'm a crafter and apparently a hoarder. I don't know. Um, so yeah, I did that. I hope everybody enjoyed the Dollar Tree haul. I'm so excited. I may have one more coming up Friday, but you've already seen because this will be shown on Monday. Maybe we'll see if I can get to the Dollar Tree on my way home from my meeting today. If I take my lunch break and see what they have. I am being very careful. I still hand sanitizing, wearing my masks. My outs of the house are very limited, but I thought, you know, the Dollar Tree is worth it in my book. Um, so yeah, I'm getting a haircut. My hairdresser, she is a single cutter shop. So it's just her. And most times when I'm in there, she comes in to kind of accommodate, which I love her for that, my crazy schedule. Um, it's just me and her or me three of us in there at one time. It's never any, a lot. Of, there's never more than two or three of us in that shop at one time. So that's fine. Um, I'm so excited because it's getting warm and I got my sun blocks for the season and a little public service for you. Those of you who might have a health savings account, I don't know about FSA. I have an HSA, which is a health savings account and I can buy sunblock with my HSA. Now this I did not, I got it at Costco. And this is Alba Botanical Hawaiian Sunscreen. This is um, reef safe. So if you're going in the ocean, this is really something that you wanna think about because it protects the wildlife and the reefs. Apparently reef, apparently um, regular sunblock has chemicals in it that can affect the balance in the, of the reefs. And so I know when I've cruised or gone to the Caribbean, they, and on 
excursions and stuff, they've actually required that you have some form of reef friendly sunblock. So this was $12, came in a two pack. It was no more expensive because it used to be super expensive, but it was no more expensive than Neutrogena or whatever. So this is when I go on vacation ever, or I'll just use it all summer. It smells like coconut, which is my favorite. That was an issue I had growing up. I say growing up, but really there wasn't sunblock out until later in my life. But I have to wear like 50, 70. I'm very fair, very fair skinned. And I burn. I don't tan, I burn. So growing up, I had to get the safe sunblock that never smelled good. And it was always the oils that smelled like coconut. And this smells like coconut. So it just makes me happy to have an option that smells good. So that's for the body. I'll use that at, like I said, it doesn't matter to me where. And then I bought, with my HSA, so squirrel, um, I went on CVS.com and put these in my cart and then paid with my HSA account and, it, and shipping was free. So it was safe and it came within like two days. I got Neutrogena Sport Face. We're going to see how this works. Uh, 70 SPF when I ride my bicycle. If I put regular sunblock on my face, it will start, and I sweat, it runs into my eyes, and it's very painful and annoying. And I start getting, like, blurred vision because I have sunblock in my eyes, and I have to stop and deal with that, and then I end up wiping off the sunblock. So, 70 for my face, it sports. And then I got one of these little um, kids. It's Wet Skin Kids. I'm going to order another one of these because there's not a lot in here. It is a stick that goes on when you're wet so you can for me it's my you know it smells like fruit it's really good but you can rub it wherever for me it will be usually my face when I'm at the beach or at the pool or something and you're wet this will go on so I am going to order a secondary of this because I already have sun damage on my face, so I'm kind of obsessed with sunblock. And then I have this left from last year, and it was good. It works well. I had another brand that I got last year, and it was a mineral. I didn't like it at all. It was super thick, and it would, like, suck up the moisture in my skin, and I would feel so dry and almost painful. And it was expensive, so I'm not buying that again. So we're going to try this on Saturday. I tried a little sampling of it, but I will put this all over my face because I'm going for a bike ride on Saturday and we'll see how, how it works. But this is Neutrogena Sport Face Oil-Free Broad Spectrum Resist Sweat Off Won't Clog Pores. So it's specifically designed for your face, which I need. So for now, I have two body and two face. Um, here at my condo, we do have a pool. I have no idea if it'll open or not. But, and sunblock does go bad. I just got rid of a bunch that I had from two summers ago. It was good last summer, but it expired. So I needed to restock my sunblock. The other one that I get is Copper Tone. No, Hawaiian Tropic Sport Body. Smells like coconut too. If you're looking for foam, something that smells like summer. All right, I'm going to enjoy my coffee. See my foam? Ooh, see my foam on top? It's good. I'm going to enjoy my coffee and about a half an hour before I have to start work. And then I'll be leaving to go get my meeting done. All right, guys, I'll chat with you later. All right, guys, this is the next space. It's getting defunct. <laughs> my, my craft slash office is a disaster. Yeah, this, <laughs> this work setup is not going to work. I mean, this was short-term desk, not going to work long-term. So we're going to buy a new desk. Hi, Alex. And then oh, I'm in my work clothes. Some purging stuff. This all needs cleaned up. That's the bathroom over there. Just has kitty litter in it. But this. Ugh, is craft storage. And some of my mama's stuff. I'm going to box up my mom's stuff. I'm not ready to get rid of it yet. And I am purging the holy heck out of this closet. This is the before. Oh, guys. 
crazy. And then we'll show you the progress. All right, here's the closet. Mostly cleaned out. <laughs> I got a couple more things. Those two totes aren't getting purged. It's Christmas and Halloween's giving. That's what's in those two totes. Um, this tote on the top here is like markers, office supplies. I need to kind of go through that and donate. And these two are important documents. So they will not go anywhere. Um, up here, stuff I'm not getting rid of, but maybe needs to be reorganized. And then I have in here is storage. And then these bags are mostly fabric and apparently Christmas. So I have to kind of finish going through those, but I was going to wait a lot. Like this whole bag is t-shirts and, um, stuff to cricket on. So that'll stay. Up here is some blankets. That's Christmas card stuff and some other Christmas things that need to be organized. Uh, that bag's coming down. That's my mom's dog. It goes nowhere. And that's my mom. <laughs> that's her. <laughs> I'm sorry. That's funny to me. That's my mom's ashes. Well, half of my mom's ashes anyway. The other half is in the Caribbean Ocean, and those are going to go with me to Ireland next year, or some of those, and then the rest is going into an urn. Sorry, it's just funny. All right, so that's where we're at. Oh, I'll show you what we're at out here. <laughs> that's my workspace over there, but this is all the things I've pulled out of the closet and need to organize and purge some more. And there's the kitties there in their window. Hi guys! Ugh. Sorry, my shirt's a little risque. I have to get a haircut. We're here with Wellington at the vet. I just called them. They're gonna come out and get them. I know, baby. He hates this. He hates that crate. Any crate. He hates being, you are okay. In the house, he will lay in that. I had him in it for like five minutes while I was getting ready. He's totally fine in it inside the house. But as soon as we get in this car, and he's been this way his whole life. I don't know if I ever told you, but I brought him home when he was almost six weeks old. He was tiny, little baby. And um, he's, I raised him. He lived with me. And so I used to work and live about an hour and a half to two hours away from my home home. So I had a home in Columbus and I rented a house where I worked and I would drive him back and forth with me on the weekends if I was going to be gone more than a day because I didn't want to leave him alone. And he since never got used to riding in the car and he was a baby at that point in this, this is what we get two hours. He would be hoarse by the time we would get home. I've tried letting him in the room freely in the car. And that didn't work out very well either because he kept trying to stand on my steering wheel. Now he would probably just want to sit in my lap, but I don't find it safe to do that. I know, baby. I've given him treats. One time I even, on the way home, was feeding him string cheese. And he just moaned around chewing. He was like... All right, well, I'm here, I'm waiting. Let's see how this goes. I'm a little nervous, not gonna lie. This is the first time he's been to a vet or any of my pets really where I wasn't with them. So we'll see what happens. Okay, I don't like this at all. So I just, uh, they're picking him up now. I just talked to the vet technician. Um, so they, this is all done over the, sorry, this is all done over the phone. So she called me and was kind of asking what was going on. I went over, you know, he's been, of course today he's like loud as can be and acting normal, but he's losing weight and that really bothers me. Um, he's not eating great. His asthma has been flaring. So I, I needed to get him in. I didn't feel like it was an emergency to risk people during the COVID, but our veterinarian offices are back open. And with COVID, I just, I don't know. I just worry. So 
I just talked to her and they're so nice here. I love them. They're going to check him out, check his asthma, check his breathing. They listen to his heart and then they're going to do some blood work and see if he's, you know, how his body is acting. He's 12 and a half years old. I mean, he, it's time. It's time for him to have blood work. So they're going to check like thyroid, CBCs, blood counts, kidney function, liver function, all the things, heart function, things that they can check through some blood work for a senior cat. But so the sad thing, that's not the sad thing. He'll be fine. The sad part was I had to take him in his kit because they are still doing no contact, which I understand pets can catch this. Uh, oh, sorry, my nose. So after I hung up, she's like, just put his little carrier by the front door. And I totally felt like I was abandoning him. He was so scared. I could see him looking at me like, mom, where are you going? Where are you going? And he, uh, he was like scared in his little carrier. So the lady came out, the young girl, and she got him. So I'm sure he's fine. They will love on him. They are so good to him here. But that's my baby kitty. This is hard, guys. All right. I could imagine having a child and have to do this. I mean, I wouldn't. I obviously wouldn't leave a toddler or a child in a cage at a door, but it was sad. All right. I'm drinking some Gatorade today because, again, Lori and the coffee problem. All right, let's wait for the vet to call us. Okay, I feel better. <laughs> I don't have Wellington yet. I just talked to the vet. Um, he's got a little bit of tartar, but he's not eating his hard food as much. So that explains the tartar buildup, but I'm not, he's 12 and a half. I'm not worrying about a little bit of tartar. Um, blood work is going to be important, which is good. He's getting that done. He needs steroids. He has, she said she could hear the grumbling in his chest. Um, seasonal allergies, animals get it too. And he, um, you know, he's flaring up. So we caught him before he got any infection or any distress, which is when I, I'm kind of thankful for working at home right now. I'm able to catch with him, especially I'm able to catch, you know, when he, his behavior changes and things. And the steroids will actually help his appetite a little bit too. And I may end up having to start give him a little more wet food uh, in the mornings and at night. She said the wet food is great for him, especially, and he doesn't need the crunchy as much. And it gives him more moisture. So that's it. They're going to bring him out. Well, I have to pay. They're going to call me and I'm going to pay. And then they're going to bring him and his medicine. And we will start that tonight. And he gets it for five days. So I think it's three, two tablets, three days, two tablets, one day, one tablet, something like that. It's a step down with steroids for people and animals. All right. Well, I feel better that I got him in and we caught it before his asthma turned into something a little more sinister, like an infection and sinuses and lung infections are hard on cats. So I'm just going to wait and I will talk to y'all. Bye. Whew, I got it cleaned up. I took the dresser out of my vacuum. This is it until I get a desk in here, which I have to wait for Ikea. So what I did is I moved the dresser and I put the TV on a couple TV trays. I may have to get some books to raise it up. Just until, like I said, I'm able to get a desk. The desk will go here. That plastic table that the cats lay on and I use for crafts, that gets put away. There's my monitor for when my desk gets here. My cart needs organization next. And then over here, I have a fan out because it's hot in here, but that's my sewing machine, my Cricut, storage, flip flops. That's all of my Cricut vinyl, which I need to find a better place for. But for now, this is going to be decent. Um, my little Ikea dresser that's just full of all crafty bits. Hello. <laughs> Don't look at my crazy hair bathroom behind me that just has kitty litter and here's the storage organization i need to figure out a home for this stuff um but yeah i was able to get the dresser that's all fabric the totes on top are seasonal those are tools and things i use this is not meant to be cute storage this is storage 
you know, it's functional space that I need to keep all my stuff for crafting and DIYs and videos. That's all extra storage boxes and then the drawers are full of different stuff. And right there where you see those, those are floor mats that I use when I block knitting. Uh, that's where the table slides in. So yeah, this is it. I'll bring you back this way. And that's my workspace for now until I get my desk. And then that table um, gets pushed up against a wall. And if my monitor's too big, I'll have to use something to hold it. But I think it'll be okay on the new desk. But yeah, that's it. It's finally clean, guys. Look, I have a floor. It's been vacuumed. It needs to be shampooed, but... It's good. That box in the corner is all this freebie stuff I've been sent to review. I just need to get rid of it. Give it away. But that's it. Woohoo! I'm so excited. I'm making a video, guys. I'm going old school. I'm putting out a Oopsie Bread Keto recipe later in the week. But I'm going to show you these eggs. I hope you can see the color in those yolks. Guys, these are farm fresh eggs my cousin brought me. And they are amazing. The color is just so wonderful. I want to share that with you and to let you know that I've got a keto video coming out later. Uh, probably on Wednesday. Yeah, Wednesday. We'll do Dollar Tree Tuesday and the keto recipe on Wednesday. It's going to be exciting and it's old school. Oopsie or cloud bread and egg salad. Yum O. Oh. All right. I gotta get moving here. All right, guys, I'm getting ready to video for my other channel, my Cambridge Way. Uh, sir, I was loving you. That is rude. He doesn't love me. That's not true, he does. All right, it's getting late. I'm getting ready to set up my video and then I am gonna head to bed. Not really, but I have to edit. All right, well, I think we'll end the vlog here. I hope you guys enjoyed this week, and I will chat with you later. Bye.